Hey guys, Sun here. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. In today's episode, we're gonna be discussing iCloud Private Relay. What it is, what it does, how it works, why it works, and uh, comparing it with VPNs and Tor. Now, I am gonna be putting aside the is Apple evil uh, topic for today's episode, but I am not saying that Apple is doing this because they're altruistic. Is that a word? Altruist? Anyways, you get my point because they're a good player. I think they're doing it because they're going to make a shit ton of money with this, but more on this in another episode. So if you haven't smashed that subscribe button, please do it and blow it up and we'll get there. iCloud Private Relay is not a VPN and it is not Tor. Is it interesting in the context of privacy? Yes. If Apple had the best of intentions, I think that that move and all other moves that Apple have been doing by forcing third-party cookies uh, to be disabled, I believe, in Safari and stuff like this, that is slowly eroding the advertising ecosystem of data brokers. Uh, what is a data broker? A data broker is a company that buys a whole bunch of data points about users from different sources. For instance, when one connects to the internet and one does a request to example.net, we are essentially asking a DNS server, hey DNS server, can you please give me the IP address of example.com? And then DNS server will say, sure, IP address is 1.2.3.4. And then our computer will establish an HTTPS connection most of the times to example.com. And then that connection will be encrypted. And then everything's cool from a privacy perspective if we trust example.com. What has happened here is our computer has made a DNS query through a non-encrypted channel most of the times, that's kind of the default, to a DNS server. And a lot of those DNS servers are operated by internet service providers or companies that may not have the best of intentions. A great example of this is probably Google with 8.8.8.8. Whew, there's so much to be said. Um, so essentially, our ISPs, Wi-Fi internet providers, uh, hotels, a whole bunch of people can essentially buy all of those queries that are associated to our IP address. And that's a way for them to know what type of websites we're visiting. They cannot necessarily see the traffic, but they can see a lot. And if the website is accessed through non-HTTPS connection, they can actually see everything that is going on. So Apple is trying to mitigate that and a whole bunch of other hard problems with iCloud Private Relay. So the way iCloud Private Relay works in the context of DNS is that Apple has collaborated with Cloudflare. Uh, Cloudflare is a CDN, so a content delivery network, and they have created what is called oblivious DNS over HTTPS. How that works is our computer will connect to a proxy through HTTPS. That means that that proxy does not reveal anything because it's known that it's you know an oblivious DNS proxy. Once this encrypted connection is uh, established, the computer will then tell the proxy to proxy the request to a DNS provider, and that DNS provider has no clue what the origination IP is. And that DNS provider will do the DNS query and will send it back through the proxy to the client. That means that in this perfect scenario, neither the proxy or the target has the whole picture, and it also means that the ISP who's lying here, or the Wi-Fi, you know, internet provider, or whatever, they cannot see nothing. And that also applies to LTE or 5G or whatever G internet access on mobile phones. So that's quite ingenious. It's great for privacy. It means that we're no longer leaking DNS queries to one single provider. Now, if the proxy provider and the target provider collude, they could quite definitely uh, stitch it up and start knowing what we're doing. So by any means is Oblivious DNS or iCloud Private Relay uh, a way to be anonymous on the internet. For that, one needs Tor. Uh, it's really just a way for Apple to make it very hard for data aggregators to start listening at the DNS level and at the non-HTTPS level. Uh, so if we see here, uh, essentially, and I'll link to all of those things in the description, I'll also link to a bunch of really interesting things that were uh, discussed at the uh, WWDC 2021 conference. Uh, essentially, Apple is making it very hard for advertisers uh, and data aggregators. Uh, there's a whole bunch of caveats, more on this at the end of the episode, but for now I'm kind of being optimistic, okay? Um, so number one thing is they're using Oblivious DNS. Uh, they're also upgrading HTTP connections to HTTPS true proxies. So what that means is if ever your computer 
uh, or an app, I believe, tries to access HTTP stuff, it will be like, oh, HTTP is insecure. That could be sn uh, snooped by the ISP. So it will route all of this through a proxy server instead making it sh like making sure that the ISP or Wi-Fi access point provider or whatever cannot see the traffic. And the last thing that it does, and that's really, really interesting, is that when one uses Safari, it will actually route the traffic through an ingress proxy and an egress proxy. So what happens here is the ingress proxy accepts the connections from the internet, protects the IP addresses from other servers, and encrypts all internet traffic. The egress proxy accepts connections from the internet, prevents ingress proxy from seeing which websites are contacted. So in other words, one, when one wants to go on the lawnmower website, we establish a connection with the ingress proxy. It tells us where it is essentially, and then we then encrypt through some layer of onion routing or some level of onion routing. We encrypt the traffic uh, through the ingress proxy, through the egress proxy, and to the lawnmower website. What that means is the ingress proxy knows our IP address, but doesn't know what website we're trying to access. The egress proxy knows what website we're trying to access, but it doesn't know what our origination IP address is. So what that does is website owners uh, and analytics companies can no longer use our IP addresses to track us because the IP addresses, similar to when one uses a VPN, are used by hundreds if not thousands of people and it just obfuscates everything. Uh, and also those IPs are known. There's actually a list of them. So, you know, lawnmower website operator could see that, you know, this is an iCloud private relay IP address and then it's just useless to them. So by doing that, Apple is making it very hard for website operators to be able to track us. And that is fantastic. Uh, there are a whole bunch of caveats. Again, please watch it to the end for those. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll get there. So essentially, it may, means that, you know, lawnmower website cannot really know our IP address. And that's really great. So our DNS queries are obfuscated from ISPs. HTTP traffic is upgraded to HTTPS through proxies. And when one uses Safari to browse the internet and when one has an iCloud Plus subscription, all of our traffic from the IP perspective is uh, obfuscated. Uh, now, it's a good time to mention today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is you. Um, it is quite an amazing journey creating this content and having disabled monetization on YouTube for reasons that you may know now, uh, this project relies on you. So recently you guys have donated over $100 per week to the Privacy Guides project and that is super amazing. We're getting closer and closer to my $500 per week goal. 500 per week here in Canada means that I can pay my rent, I can pay my food, and I get to focus on doing this. And going deeper into that reporting rabbit hole and making sure that I get the most updated and meaningful information to you uh, so that we get to keep that privacy conversation going. So thanks to everyone who has donated. All you have to do is go on sunnewtson.com slash donate and you can donate using LibraPay or using Bitcoin. So back to today's episode. iCloud Private Relay is doing really great things to make it hard for advertisers, uh, but there are caveats. Uh, first things first is iCloud Private Relay, um, it uses essentially two nodes. So let's have a look here again. It uses an ingress proxy and an egress proxy. Ingress proxies are going to be operated by Apple, if my understanding is correct. Egress proxies are essentially CDN uh, partners. So one can see here in an article that Fastly, Cloudflare, and Akamai, three of the world's biggest content delivery networks, are partnering up with Apple, which means that essentially when one accesses this system, Ingress is owned by Apple. That said, it might be operated by one of those CDNs. I'm not sure Apple will start spawning servers all over the world. Uh, and the egress proxy is probably owned by another provider. So the fact that this and that are not the same provider, it kind of means that if they don't collude, it really helps us be more private on the internet. That said, caveat number one, if one logs in to a website, even though we're going through this kind of onion routing here with triple layer encryption, uh, we are still revealing who we are. So, I mean, whatever, that's always said in the context of Tor, like whatever you do, if you deliberately tell 
or log into a website, uh, well, your anonymity is broken. So this here is not designed first things first for to be anonymous. It's not at all a replacement to Tor. Why? Because all of those different providers probably have relationships with nation state surveillance programs. Uh, so I wouldn't start using this for like whistleblowing or anything serious. I think this is great to fight back to the advertising uh, networks and data aggregators, but it's not something one would want to use for anonymity. That said, if ingress proxy and egress proxy do not collude, it's actually quite brilliant. And the fact that the ingress proxy and egress proxy will be in the same geographic region, that makes it super fast. So one of the big differences between this and Tor is performance. Those, we're talking about CDN providers that shave milliseconds off requests. So one should not feel that, uh, you know, impact uh, in a significant way. Now, it, we are going to be encrypting information many more times, so that will definitely use some more battery life uh, if we're on mobile, and it will also add some latency. But giving all of those providers in the same place, it's quite fast. Now, compare this to how Tor works. Tor uses something called onion routing, and onion routing is a way where the client, that is Tor browser or whatever, it connects to an entry guard. The entry guard uh, those nodes are, they have a very strict governance and they're um, very closely monitored by the Tor Foundation. Uh, and essentially then the traffic is routed through a middle relay and then through an exit relay to the destination. So essentially entry guard is egress proxy and exit relay is egress proxy. So what's happening there is uh, in the context of Tor, we're adding one node and usually nodes are very far apart. They're in different jurisdictions, which means that governments have to collude together to be able to piece all of that together. So from the context of anonymity, Tor is by orders of magnitude better uh, than you know iCloud Private Relay. So Tor is really still designed for people who need anonymity, not just privacy. Now, another caveat is that in the context uh, of iCloud Private Relay, only what one does in Safari benefits from this kind of like onion routing Apple style. Uh, that means that if one is, you know, using our mail client, well, that mail client will not go through that system. So we're still revealing our IP to our mail client, things like this. Uh, so that's a really big caveat here iCloud Private Relay uh, is just not a VPN in the sense that a VPN, I use Malvad and I have a kill switch, it forces all traffic from my Mac to go through the VPN. That is not the case here with uh, iCloud Private Relay. Now, iCloud Private Relay um, also does not allow someone to choose uh, the exit node or the egress proxy as they call it, meaning that if someone wants to watch Netflix in another country or from another country, well, this product is really not for that. It's really not something that one can use to spoof our location. It's a way to hide our real IP. That's kind of like what it is. It also forces HTTP to HTTPS and runs DNS queries through oblivious DNS, but it's not a way for us to operate, you know, to navigate the internet from a different country. Now, there are really good ethical reasons why one would want to do that. In Europe, GDPR law makes it very strict what people can collect as information without having explicit consent. This is not the case in all of uh, the United States or Canada, for instance. So I really like the idea of browsing the internet from a country with better legislation, let's say Switzerland. Uh, and that's something that a VPN allows us to do. So a VPN still has like really strong reasons why one would want to use it. But since the VPN provider is the exit node for all traffic and knows who we are because we paid for a subscription uh, or we logged into a website, you know, revealing who we are potentially, well, that VPN is not adding uh, that much privacy, if that VPN is a bad actor, well, we're kind of screwed. And that's where choosing the right VPN is super crucial. And uh, yeah, I, I might create another episode on this because it's a topic we just keep, we, we keep having to remind ourselves that VPNs are honeypots also in, in many ways. Um, so all of that said, I'm just gonna briefly talk about like uh, why Apple may wanna do stuff like this. Apple is a multi-billion dollar, multi-trillion, sorry, multi-trillion, 
the scale is just ridiculous. It's a multi-trillion dollar company. Why would Apple start caring about privacy when Apple is there to make money for its shareholders? Um, I think because creating that positioning uh, made them very appealing for users of, say, Android phones. It's a way for them to have people move from other ecosystems to the Apple ecosystem. And the fact that iCloud Private Relay will only work in the context of Safari, well, that means that they're creating lock-in within their browser that reminds us you know, about Internet Explorer or Chrome, you know, that kind of lock-in. Uh, they're also going to sell a lot more hardware because this stuff will only work on Apple hardware. Uh, so there's like a whole bunch of very interesting kind of level one reasons why Apple is going to make a killing uh, through this master plan of theirs. Another uh, kind of one level deeper uh, scenario is Apple is destroying the advertising ecosystem or the data aggregator ecosystem. And that's a multi-billion dollar, if not trillion dollar ecosystem. And by breaking this up, fragmenting it, it's reconsolidating in ways where, for instance, the default browser in Safari, I'm pretty sure I'll confirm this and I'll edit it out if ever, I think the default browser is Google. And I'm pretty sure Google is paying Apple in the multiple billions a year just to be the default browser. I'm not sure what it is, but it may be even like in the tens of billions a year. Well, Google, Facebook, so all of these platforms that then use metadata and links to track people and they use pixels to track people across websites, all of this tracking will still work. I don't think Apple will be stripping out metadata out of the URLs. That means that, you know, having Google be the default search engine in Safari, that is going to be worth so much more. And then Apple also has its own advertising system for developers to promote apps and stuff like this. So again, people will want to advertise natively on that ecosystem, on Apple's ecosystem. So I think Apple will really grow its revenue. I mentioned in the last episode how I was really pumped about reporting. I am super excited to try to find a way to fund this deeper research. I would love to write a story on this and kind of dig really deep into those dynamics. Uh, I think it's quite fascinating. And I think right now Apple is becoming stronger and stronger. And it's like, it's almost in the, in the antitrust landscape. Like I think eventually as everyone is on this system because they crave privacy, for instance, well, Apple is just gonna own a much too big share of what we do on the internet. And I think that that is wrong. Decentralization is key. Uh, so yeah, I'll be researching this more and sharing it with you and I will see you soon. Bye.